Okay. Take two. Three. Two. Hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. For more than 35 years, the Wildlife Department has been hosting and conducting fishing clinics all across the state, just like this one here today. At the clinics, participants are taught a variety of things, from how to cast, to simple knot tying, to fish identification, water safety, and even how to clean the fish they catch. The educational clinics have become a tremendous tool to expose literally hundreds of thousands of not just kids, but also adults to the joys of fishing. A wildlife department that prioritizes passing on the outdoor heritage to the next generation. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. Yeah, ever since I started fishing here, I always thought it would be nice if I can win one of these sleep. Usually it's the bass right before it starts winning. And actually when it starts winning, even that 30 minutes is really great. The sunrise here is incredible you'll enjoy that as much as anything actually uh, when i have enough money instead of buying a car like most of the kids i bought me the boat <laughs> oh, i finished around 12 years old we come in here to oklahoma from uh, san francisco and just as soon as we got here, we met up with uh, this elderly man and he took us fishing and it sort of stayed forever. Uh, just the outdoors so nice and addictive. Been fishing ever since I can remember. He actually took us to a farm pond first, but the farm pond is so far to go. Lake Heaven though, is the closest lake to our house. So uh, my brother Tom and I sometimes just ride our bike from 11 and young up to Lake Heaven though. And uh, we started out using worms and this elderly gentleman so much how to use what they what he called dollfly. They call it jits nowadays, but uh, he showed us how to tie our own door flies. Uh, now I have to look for them, there's different areas, they like to hang around more. So I uh, have to uh, see which way the wind is blowing, then uh, we'll decide which way to start first. Since the wind is coming out of the west today, so the east bend would be a little bit better. There's a sandbar that comes up here with the way the direction of the wind, the fish may be on this side, they are feeding. The fastest way to find them is do a little bit what, what we call trolling. It's basically put some crank bay in the water and dry around fast enough to cover a lot of water. They tend to be in Saratoga water early in the morning. So we'll start at the Saratoga water. I lost my fishing partner a couple years ago, so I have to do most of this by myself now. We've been fishing together ever since we, we know how to wire a bite. <laughs> but he passed a couple years ago. Oh, we love the outdoors. Like to hunt and fish. I'm the one in the middle, so I do both. My older brother likes to hunt and Tom loves to fish. Many people come in and we talk about fishing and where to go and how to catch them. Yeah, so he likes to show off, that's why he's got all his pictures out here. <laughs> and his power, his catches. Well, that's his walleye. Uh, he caught our late heaven, though. 
but we normally catch them in the at night time or late late in the evening after we get off work where most people are already asleep and that is a bass he caught out of a farm pond he goes to uh, whatever farm pond he can get permission to go into and we go there and see if there's any good fish there and then this uh, some of the photo he have from uh, different places and different town. But there are so many photos, he put them all out here. We'll have a line the whole restaurant. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the reasons uh, I got this big boat. He's kind of handicapped, need a little help. So uh, this boat give him room for wheelchairs and a lot of room to fish. When he got much older, that uh, he had uh, cancer. That's what uh, put him in the wheelchair. We lost Tom in 2019, and that's really hard on me because we fish all the time. And now he's, he's not here. He just didn't feel the same for a long time. But eventually I got back out and stopped picking up where we left because I finally realized he wanted me to be fishing. And he's probably looking over my shoulder to be sure that I'm catching fish. So I went back out and pick up a fan here and there and still enjoy the outdoors. It's always good to, uh, to be out with somebody, whether you are just having fun or you are out there targeting special fish and really want to catch that one type of fish. It's always helpful and, it, and it's safe, a lot safer to have somebody fishing or hunting together. This is a sand bass. This could be a little high, but it's got a, got a little line, broken line in it. It's darker than normal. I've been fishing at Lake Haven for 55 years. And I see how the lake change, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Of course, I think I'm the best, but there's always room for improvement. And once you find them, you can either continue throwing back and forth the same spot or you can stop and, uh, and use jade or spoon form. When my children turn 16, what I give them for their 16th birthday is not a car, it's the lifetime hunting and fishing license. Maybe I'm just can't afford a car, but I want them to be able to enjoy the outdoor as much as I do. Because it's uh, getting to be less and less of it. All your big tall buildings coming up everywhere. So uh, we need to treasure this one activity we still be able to enjoy. I love to see the young ones pick up fishing and I don't have a whole lot against video games but I think if they go out and uh, enjoy the outdoor a little bit it's better for them, for their health and their mind. It's always good when we can get out. Uh, we didn't get our limit or something, but uh, we're definitely uh, happy to be out.
go. So my, my sister ran across a man who, I believe, his name is Mr. Green, ironically. It's a John Deere Green uh, lawnmower here. Um, and so he was describing it to her and she's like, man, that sounds crazy. And he sent her a picture and so she, she forwarded that to me. And she's like, do we want to buy this? This guy's actually, it's for sale. And I was like, man, that's just crazy enough to work. Um, so uh, we, we, uh, we bought it. We just, we put it on the water for the first time oh, about a month, month and a half ago, not having any idea what, if this thing's going to work or what. Uh, and uh, it, it, it definitely turned some heads. A lot of people are noticing it and stuff like that. So we thought it would be a pretty cool, uh, just a, one, a toy, but a, just something cool, neat and different. My name's Gunnar Gorman, and yeah, we're just out here fishing. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and visiting Oklahoma, because they're my family. So we're just out here fishing on the, on, oh, the lawn tomb boat. Yeah, hopefully we can catch some crappie. We went crappie fishing uh, yesterday. No, not yesterday, two days ago. Caught about 50 for the day, like 12 keepers. So it was a good day. I mean, it's pretty, it's just relaxing. It's fun, just reeling in, just a huge fish fighting it. And then and just a good way to just yeah, just chill. We're all having fun at the same time. Yeah, here it's like every single species. I mean, in Alabama, it's just bass and bass and catfish, and that's it. Here they got catfish, crappie, bass, um, gar, everything. So yeah, it's a lot better fishing here. Largemouth bass. Catch a lot of these in Alabama. Let him go. Um, so we're fishing with a crappie jig, and we don't, and just a minnow on the top. So if they're not going, if they're not going for the jig, then they'll go for the minnow. Oh my gosh. We just gotta find them. I mean, it's hot, but I'm used to it. Alabama is a very hot place. This summer hasn't been as hot as it normally is, but whew, it can get hot. Uh, I really like bass fishing, largemouth. And it, it's not like cat fishing where you would just stick it out there and just leave it there. It's just active, it takes skill. It'd be cool if you could like put, actually I don't know, like turf right here to make it look like you're mowing the grass. I got turf, it's just really short. Yeah. You have your good days and you have your bad days. People say, yeah, it's the crappie, crappie capital of the world. <laughs> Yesterday, I can agree. Today, I don't know. So yeah, this whole lake is man-made. I mean, this is a, it's a great lake. And then it, the best time to fish bright and early in the morning when it's not hot and then when it gets about 11 all the way through the rest of the day it's like feels like 105 pretty much on average every day it's too hot to be fishing that's when you go and play fish in the morning play during the day oh it can it's a lot faster than you'd expect but it's just important to be safe on the water and just you know not overdo it so it's important to have your life jackets on. Yeah, just not go too fast. Don't be reckless. Got to throw up a big old rooster tail and most lawns on the way in. Right? <laughs> All right, let's roll.
we've been fishing up here all oh, last week, three or four times, and uh, sand bass have been running up the river out of Worcester Reservoir and up up Poto River where we are, and uh, they've been you know wanting to spawn and trying to spawn, and usually uh, this time of year water temperature gets all around 55 or something. They go up those shoals as far as they can go, and they and they spawn. So today maybe maybe it'll be a good day. So we'll just have to go up here and see. And yeah. Of course, if we don't catch any fish, we'll have fun anyway. Right? Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, the crappie uh, fishing is uh, it's starting to do pretty good too. Uh, my mother-in-law has been up here several times. And they've been taking back anywhere from 10 to 20 crappie in the last week or two. So that sounds good. And, and so they've, they've been doing pretty good. They've been catching momentum. So springtime fishing is it's, it's starting right now. Well that's, well, that's better than nothing. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start out with that, and then, then go from there. So let's catch some fish. Ooh. I bet she didn't like that a bit. When you think these fish are gonna really start, you know, biting real good? It'll be about one, one thirty. One or one thirty. Yeah. <laughs> It'll warm on that. Exactly. I'm gonna watch my watch now. It's okay. Yeah, it's about ten after twelve right now. That's I just assume they they bit just a little bit sooner than that. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer. A little bit bigger fish. That one. Good, good. I lost him. Dead damn it. Came off, Wayne. Yeah, pretty good. Bring him in. Bring him in here. I believe that's a little bit bigger, bigger fish than this one. Don't lose him. Don't lose him. Oh yeah, that's that's probably that looks like a big female right there. I believe that's a big fish of the day so far, Wayne. So far. That's good. That's a fish. Talk to the rub. Yeah. Okay. I good. think that's the best the, the best thing we, we got we can do here. Go ahead and put yours in there. Yeah. Nice fish, nice fish. Let's see. Let's see if we can catch some more, though. You want to? Or you want to go home? Probably right here. Oh, okay. I thought you would say yes. That's a pretty good fish. Good enough. I wonder if that's that fresh water coming in here. Maybe it's a little bit warmer or something, making this water warmer right here. Probably Whatever so. it is, it's up to We've caught four or five right there, so that, maybe that makes a difference. I got one right here, Wayne. Right up underneath the boat. Well, that's nice. Right up underneath the boat. Mm. There's one right here. Looks like a good one. Well, I hadn't seen him yet, but I think he is. He's pulling pretty good. Ooh. Well, just stick him in that live room. He's fasty. You know, those those uh, eliminators they
I got him. That's nice. I'll be all good here, man. I don't think I'll try to get in here. a little heavy. Oh, that is. That's a nice one. That's still not as big as that one you caught a while ago, though. Yeah, that's not a bad, that's a, that's a pretty good fish. I got one. Oh! He's on. Oh, here's another one, Wayne. Putting up another fight, good fight, too. You got one, too? I've got a good one. Yeah. Bring him in. What is That fish broke my hook. Oh, he did? Yeah, he sure did. That's a tough fish right there. Broke my hook. That's all right, though. That's another nice fish. Yours is, what, we got about the same size? About the same. That's good. I don't know, we've caught, what, 25, 25 yeah. fish or so? We've had a good day, yeah. We've had a, good, we've had a pretty good day. It was a little slow there for at first, but when the, when the uh, temperature started warming up and the wind changed back out of kind of the south, southwest, Sun shard kept shining good, warmed up the water. They start hitting a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, they hit a lot better. You wanna, you wanna call it a day on this last double? Yeah, we might as well. We got a game tonight. Yeah, we do. We got that tournament to go to, the baseball tournament down at Hevener. So let's go ahead and put these in the live well. Ease on out of here. <laughs> well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a perfect state to explore. So however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember that your adventure starts with outdoor Oklahoma. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow. So who caught it? You caught it. That thing is as big as you. That's awesome. Yeah, come on, you gotta say you touched the fish. There, there you go. go. She's, she's she did it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.